Inside this room, all of my dreams become realities, and some of my realities become dreams. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Alive, it's alive, it's alive! You are listening to The Wilder Ride, getting wilder by the minute. Here are your hosts, Alan Sanders and Walt Murray. Welcome back. It's Friday. You made it to the end of the week. This is The Wilder Ride, Getting Wilder by the Minute, a podcast where we break down and celebrate the films of Gene Wilder one minute at a time. I'm one of your hosts, Alan Sanders. And I'm the other one of your hosts, Walt Murray. And we are having a good time with this opening week of Young Frankenstein, our inaugural season as Movies by Minutes podcasters. This is, uh, yeah, it's been a good week. It, we've, I think we've learned a lot. We were talking in our production meeting before this episode that we had a, a lot to kind of get our feet under us. But I think we've done that pretty well, maybe with some exceptions on my part. But uh, it, it has been a fun week leading up. And now we're really starting to get into the, the great parts of the movie. So we now know for sure, it's been confirmed to us in this minute, that apparently some of the interesting furniture choices in the castle of Frankenstein is to keep a coffin in front of the fireplace. Oh, you You know, we want to keep things warm. Grandpa's coffin laying there by the fireplace? No, not not generally speaking. I don't, I don't, I mean, mean, we have some funeral homes, if you're talking about that kind of home, but last I checked, this wasn't a funeral home. Well, this is Germany, so we can't judge other other cultures by our standards. (laughs) (laughs) Which reminds us that we will be having a German uh, citizen on our our (laughs) podcast. (laughs) Yeah, we got it. got a buddy from Germany who's going to join us in one one or two of these podcasts or one of these shows. All right, so we, we cut across the top, and we have the title, Baron von Frankenstein. Yes, and again, right up to this point, keeping that same kind of dark mood, we know who Baron von Frankenstein is, the man who tried to reanimate dead bodies, and it didn't work out so hot. And here we are at his coffin. Now, do you, I mean, do people normally keep, I mean... <laughs> Well, here's the thing. You're stuck on this furniture thing, aren't you? <laughs> I, I'm, really, I'm really bothered by this. Because I get back in the old days, you'd have the body out for people to come visit, but there's nobody here. I mean, obviously, there's a if, if the person just died, why are we viewing it at the house? Maybe I guess the cat. Maybe this, this is the one place the whole town's going to come show up. I don't know. Well, and I don't think the town's going to show up for this one. They were not happy with him. Uh, the last time we saw Baron von Frankenstein. <laughs> you, mean, you mean Frankenstein's monster caused some havoc in the village? A little bit, a little bit. And fire and pitchforks? Yeah, and when your neighbors show up with fires and pitchforks, that's not a good sign. Never never good for a, for a town hall meeting, eh? <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get elected uh, president of the HOA. Well, we do get a jump scare. We do. We get our first taste of the uh, horror genre. Now, here's the thing that I found interesting going back and watching this. As the camera has done that very slow across the room from the grandfather clock to the fireplace, down the backside of the coffin to the foot of the coffin, and then comes up over the top of the coffin and then comes down to the edge of the coffin, very slow, all you hear is the chiming of the clock ringing its 12 gongs for midnight. And all of a sudden, as the camera sits there for a second, boom! The lid comes flying open and we're staring at a corpse. You're staring at the dead body of Baron von Frankenstein. And, you know, it's kind of a mix of a jump scare, but also some comedy because that is a goofy looking. Well, I'm trying to imagine if I was a kid and I saw this, I would have probably crapped myself. I would have because that is, I would, you know, I'm expecting initially in my head, I'm thinking, okay, the guy just died. It's weird. This is a weird family. They decided to put the coffin in front of the fireplace for a little while. Instead of putting it on ice, they put it in front of the fire, whatever. And they're going to invite some friends over. You know, maybe the reason we don't see anybody in the room, it's midnight. Maybe they just finished the wake. The last person left, whatever. This guy hasn't, didn't just die. No, he's, he's been departed a while. I mean, this guy he doesn't have any lips. They're kind of all pulled back from his teeth. You're starting to see it's basically what's left of the skin has already kind of like stretched and started to pull apart against the skull. Yeah, his hair is kind of crazy looking. Uh, the Did you know your hair keeps grow. growing after you're, you're I've heard dead? That. I've heard that. This guy was bald when he died. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> looks like uh, Larry looks from like, the Three Stooges. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little like uh, Doc Brown from... Oh, yeah. Back to the future. Back to the future. All the white hair yeah. flying everywhere. Well, and you've got his hands are all withered. I mean, he's obviously uh, been, been gone a while. He has been gone for a while. So that begs the question, what's he doing in the coffin in the in the, in the the front of the fireplace? <laughs> is, this, is this how you treat guests? The family just couldn't let him go. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it, it worked for my monster. Maybe it'll work for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's uh, coming back. No, I, well, no, they didn't. Why didn't he? 
Well, I guess we could ask that question. But why wouldn't you have tried to bring Grandpa back? Maybe they were just running from the uh, Frankenstein Frankenstein name. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Now, he is grasping something in his car. It looks like some kind of a cigar box. Yeah, an ornate box. It has some kind of crest or seal on the front. Definitely has the F, the Frankenstein. Yeah, Frankenstein. F, maybe the family crest with the eagle, their typical almost uh, German Reich style kind of eagle emblazoned on the on the box itself. But he seems like, you know, when they say you can't take it with you, well, he seems bent on taking He's, it wherever he, he wants went. He wants to take it with him. And, you know, the I guess the ominous thing here is for families that do things like this and put things into the casket with a dearly departed, it's usually something that's real emblematic of their life, something that really represents what they stood for. So it's almost scary to think what's in the box. As we progress, we realize someone has decided to rip open the top of the casket and they're reaching in very slowly (laughs) to get the box. But when I said that he died holding on to this, wanting to take it with him, Um, I think that's true. He does not want to let this go. Yeah, we kind of have a dead man box fight going here. And uh, he, he, (laughs) with that snap back. Yeah, he tries to pull the box away. Now, I'm expecting this guy is nothing but skeleton, basically, with a little bit of just outer skin tissue, barely. I mean, you look at his fingers. It looks like bone with just skin that has sort of like, uh, I don't know, shrink wrapped around the bone. It's so gnarled and bony. Dusty and. And yet. It's got a pretty strong grip. Yeah, he didn't let that box go. Apparently, when you die, you get a kung fu grip like the old G.I. Joes or something with the well, kung fu grip. Even from his grave saying, no, don't let this one out. The Someone is desperate to get whatever it is that this corpse is hanging on to. And as he starts to pull in the arms of the corpse, it looks like are going to rip away. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like, nope, those are rubber bands. And it just <laughs> snaps <laughs> right, right back. <laughs> Well, and you can see the tentativeness, too, of the person who's picking the box out. His hands are quivering a little bit. and uh, I think taken a little off guard. It definitely was, just so, like we were. Now, this is the first indication that this is funny. It is. It is. But it still has that mix of darkness and gloominess. And it, it doesn't change tone as much, but it does give you the idea that, yeah, you're in the right movie. Okay, now, obviously, you know what happens. You've seen this movie a, a, a lot of times. A lot. The very first time, if you can remember, or when you went back and rewatched it recently, do you think, like, is the joke that the guy's, the, the skeleton is actually alive and was able to snap it back because it's still not dead entirely? That's what I thought the first time. Okay. Because that's, that's what I thought that when is exactly I watched what it. I, thought the first I was like, oh my God, he's not, he's yeah, not dead. That's, that's what I thought too. Then you realize, no, he is dead. He is dead. <laughs> he's just, Which makes it even better. Even beyond the grave, the reflex action is to, <laughs> I am holding on to this with everything <laughs> I've got. You cannot have my cigar box. It's mine. Mine, mine, mine. All mine. <laughs> So obviously he's uh, the the hands go back to uh, try to wrestle away again before this minute comes to an end. So we we have now established in the very early shot of this movie a member of the Frankenstein family has long since departed, has not yet been interred anywhere that we can tell. Mm-hmm. There's no dirt on that coffin. Nope. That was a clean coffin. Nope, he is still sitting there. And someone was desperate to get inside of it and get at the box that whoever the which the, the Baron von Frankenstein corpse, which we have to assume that's his corpse, does not want to let go. No, definitely does not. Isn't that, if a, isn't that sort of like an element of foreshadow if the corpse doesn't want you yeah. to have their book? Not a good sign. You shouldn't maybe take not it anywhere sign. to anybody else who might have, I don't know, aspirations of raising the undead? Yeah, I think that's, a, that's definitely a bad, bad sign. And there's also some things that will come up later um, as far as relationships that he's had which that are going to come into play that will come back to, to this scene. But this is a, uh, yeah, when, when the corpse is saying, I'm not giving this up, there's some problem with what's in there. How do you think he died? Wow, that's a great question. Because um, I don't know the I, I don't know the the Mary Shelley Frankenstein story well enough to know what actually happens to the original Doctor Frankenstein. I don't either. I guess we'll do some. Does he just die of week. old age? Does he? Is he? I mean, because it looks like he died of old age here. There's, it doesn't look like he. I mean, there's no damage outside of the fact that you know he doesn't have any skin anymore, and his eyes have pretty much rotted out, and he doesn't have a nose anymore. But I mean, he doesn't look like he died of any kind of like I don't know blunt force trauma to yeah, the head didn't or get shot in the face or anything. Um, you know, there's no noose mark. He wasn't hanged. It doesn't. Well, we don't see enough of the body to see if he'd been shot. Of course, he's got the box in front of his chest. But I mean, for all intents and purposes, it looks like he may have just died of natural causes. I'm, 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 I'm stuck on this idea that this did not just happen. This guy did not just die. He did not look this bad this morning and eventually died. No, this is years of, of decay and, and neglect of the, of the body. 
I mean, this. I mean, it's at least months. It's yeah. at least months. And yeah. what's he doing sitting in front of the fireplace? It's it's crazy. And we'll know in a few minutes that there's a caretaker and that the house is not abandoned. But uh, so well, it obviously is the house is not abandoned. The, the clock is cranked up and working. There's a the fire, fire in the, in the fireplace. fireplace. Um, there was a, a pheasant on the wall decorating outside the fireplace. You had the little little you got a little blower thing to, yeah, to, to heat stoke up the, coals, the fire. Stoke yeah. the fire. I mean, obviously people live here. I mean, this isn't it's not a mortuary, at least unless I missed the sign. No, it's not abandoned. Well, it's obvious there's going to be a little bit of a tug of war based on how we end this minute. He is not giving up with just the first time that the corpse decides, no, mine, I'm keeping it. That's right. And we're building some good tension here headed towards a uh, a very interesting setup for the next scene. Well, I hate leaving it there, but unfortunately we're at the end of the week and that's where the minute ends. That's right. So everybody's got to wait until Monday to uh, catch up on the next minute. You have to come back and find out who wins the tug of war for the cigar box inside the coffin of Baron von Frankenstein. And what may or may not be in the box. True. We don't know what's in the box, do we? We have no idea. Might be one heck of a good Cuban cigar sitting in there. Uh, let's hope. Aged. <laughs> Aged well, apparently. <laughs> well, you've made it through the first week, and we hope that you guys have been enjoying it so far. We have just begun to scratch the surface of the first of what will be many Gene Wilder podcasts in the Wilder Ride, getting wilder by the minute. We are looking at young Frankenstein. But I do need to give a quick shout out to the folks at at the uh, at Gutterballs TV, Adam and Brad, who came up with the idea of analyzing a movie a minute at a time, but really to Pete and Alex of the Star Wars Minute, that's StarWarsMinute.com. They created this daily format that we are using right here to drive this show. Yeah, and also we want to uh, thank all of you who've gone out in the last few days. Y'all are just amazing. Thank you for going out to iTunes and giving us five stars, and thank you for your comments. We are going to do our best to get caught up over the weekend and say hi to the folks who've uh, who've given us a shout-out. If you're enjoying what you're hearing, please go over to iTunes, give us a rating, and make a comment so that your uh, vote is tallied, and that'll just help uh, everybody be able to find us when they're looking for us. Also, there are several other places you can go. Alan, you want to give us the rundown of where to find us? Absolutely. Absolutely. Biggest thing is to get to our website, thewilderride.com. It's got links to all of our social media there. Uh, We are an Amazon associate, so if you actually click on any of the suggested links of Gene Wilder movies and products to buy, or if you just click on the Amazon link on our Amazon associate page, it will actually take you to the amazon.com website, but they will have known you were redirected from our website, which in turn, as a way of saying thank you for us directing folks to shop, if you buy something, no, no cost to you, some of those pennies will flow back to help offset the cost of the show. And we really appreciate that. That would be really cool. So go do your normal shopping online that you would always do, but just hit our website first, click on any of the links, or go to our Amazon Associate tab. We also have a Patreon page if you guys want to become a patron. Go check that out. Yeah, we uh, have some great levels uh, for our patrons, so check that out. Let us know if you have any questions, and thank you so much for listening. And as Walt said, we do engage with our listeners as often as we can on social media. We've got a Facebook page, we've got a Twitter account, we've even got a closed listener group if you really want to dive in the weeds and come back next week for more of young frankenstein yes minute number six oh, who wait, wins the big tug of war of frankenstein 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 frankenstein